God's Pilgrim, written by Voice of the Martyrs with L. E. Zelke, illustrated by John Robertson and R. F. Palavincini. Dedicated to courageous men and men, women, and children who dare to take a stand for God in the face of difficulty. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Luke twenty one thirty three. One moonlit night, about four hundred years ago, in the little town of Elstow, England, a boy was born. He's a strong little fellow, Thomas Bunyan exclaimed proudly as he held his son. He will make a fine tinsmith some day. The happy parents smiled as they tenderly looked into their little boy's eyes. They were right. Their son would follow in his father's trade, mending pots, but he would do much more than that. For God had a plan for little John Bunyan. While Thomas Bunyan worked hard to care for his family, John played with his friends in the village. Little John Bunyan soon grew to be a naughty boy who often escaped his chores and avoided helping his father. He roamed the streets of Elstow, causing trouble and getting into mischief. Wherever John Bunyan was, trouble followed not far behind. John knew he behaved badly and worried that he was not good enough to go to heaven. He had dreams that God was displeased with him. He often woke up in a sweat in the middle of a dark night. Another nightmare, he said to himself. God must be very upset with me. As John grew, this problem did not get better. He did not feel like he knew God, and he did not get along well with his father. When he was a teenager, his mother died, and a short time later, his sister died too. To his surprise, his father soon remarried. John felt so alone and lost that he decided to leave home. There must be more to see in this world than just Elstow, he thought. England was going through a time of turmoil. So many people were unhappy that soon civil war broke out. This is the perfect chance for me to be free of my father and his new wife, thought John. I will be a brave soldier who will, who others will look up to, and I can do as I please. So, at 16 years old, John Bunyan joined the army. Little did he know that army life was not at all as he imagined. John's time in the army was anything but easy. There was little food and barely enough water to go around. The young soldiers had to sleep in the muddy fields. One day, when John was about to go on duty, a friend offered, John, I'll take your place right now if you'll take mine later. That's okay with me, John replied. I could use a little more sleep. But a few moments later, John watched in horror as a bullet struck his friend. The soldier who had taken his place was dead. John believed that God had kept him from dying that day, and this wasn't the first time either. John's thoughts raced. John has spared me once again. God has spared me once again. First when I picked up a poisonous snake and wasn't hurt. Then when I nearly drowned. Now he has kept me from being shot. God must have a reason for keeping me alive. I must find out what that reason is. Not long after the war ended, John went home, got married, and tried to be a good man. He and his wife were very poor. John's wife had two books about God. After supper, they sat by the fire and read. John read the books eagerly and tried to understand what God had planned for his life. Slowly, John's life began to change. His family grew, and he wanted very much to be a good husband and father. John tried his best to be good, but he fell into some bad habits. One Sunday, when John was playing a ball game, he looked to the sky and thought he saw Jesus looking down at him with a sad face. He thought he could hear Jesus say, 
John, will you believe in me and go to heaven? Or will you keep doing bad things and go to hell? John stopped playing. I am not good enough to deserve God, he cried. John Bunyan felt very discouraged. Like his father, John supported his growing family by working in the nearby villages as a tinsmith. Walking in the dusty roads to the villages gave him time to think. Surely no one in the entire village tries as much as I do to please God. I no longer use bad language. I am honest. I try my best to be good. Yet, John paused and heaved a heavy sigh. I am as unhappy as I have always been. What more can I possibly do? Suddenly, John heard some voices coming from the nearby cottage. John looked into the courtyard and saw three women taking the rest from their work. They were talking about Jesus Christ, and their faces seemed to glow with happiness. Ever since God's love filled my heart, I can't help singing with joy for how wonderful he is to me. True to his promise, Jesus is always with me, exclaimed a woman. Excuse me, ladies, John interrupted. I don't mean to eavesdrop, but... You speak of God as if he were your closest friend. I try hard to be good, but I find God is still far from me. Your own works cannot save you, John heard someone behind him say. The voice of Pastor Gifford took John by surprise. Friend, your own good deeds cannot save you. It is only through Christ's goodness that we are saved. It is a gift that we simply receive from God. At last, John began to understand. He could not save himself from his sins. Only Jesus could. John prayed, Jesus, you are my Savior. Please enter in my heart and take my sins away. John Bunyan's heart filled with joy. John grew to love the Bible. In time, he came to know God's word very, very well. The townspeople saw the wonderful change in John's life. They were eager to know what had happened to him. John was very happy to tell them, Jesus is our Savior, John boldly preached. In those days, it was against the law to preach the gospel to anyone without the permission of the government. John knew that if he was caught preaching, he could be taken away from his beloved wife and his young children. He might even be sent to jail. John decided, God's word tells me to preach. I must obey God and listen to those who tell me and not listen to those who tell me to stop. One day, while John was preaching to a crowd, the authorities came and arrested him. John Bunyan, you know the law. You've been preaching without official permission. If you will stop this preaching, I will send you home. But if you refuse to stop, your honor, replied John firmly, God has commanded me to preach. And so I will do. Then said the judge harshly, I hereby sentence you to jail. So John was led away to a cold and dark jail cell. John missed his family. And he was very sad. John's oldest daughter, Mary, was blind. Since he was not given enough food in jail, little Mary brought him soup every day. I've been making shoelaces and selling them through the window. Please give this money to your mother, he said. John was sad to be away from his family, but trusted God to provide for their needs. John continued to help support his family. He prayed. He preached to people that came near his cell window. And then he began to write. I dreamed that I was a pilgrim. John began to write a story about a man named Christian. Like John, Christian loved God. And as he made his way courageously to the heavenly city, he encountered many obstacles. When he finished the story many months later, he thought, I will call it The Pilgrim's Promise. I hope someone reads it someday. Even though he was in jail, a group of Christians voted for John to be their pastor. John was faithful to his duty, and he would speak to them through his little window. Because the jailer knew John was an honest man, he sometimes let him out to visit his family and preach. John always promised to come back and to be back in the jail that by evening. One day, an official made a surprise visit to the jail. 
The jailer was very worried as he opened the cell door. He had allowed John to leave his cell that day. What trouble he would be in. John, you're here! The jailer exclaimed in relief. The jailer did not know it, but God had led John to return to his cell just in time. The laws about preaching in public finally changed, and John was released. He had been in jail for 12 years. Many people respected the sacrifice John and his little family had made. John began to preach again, and many, many people came to hear him. He wrote 60 more books. To his surprise, the pilgrim, Pilgrim's Progress became very popular. In 1688, when John was 60 years old, he rode his horse to London to help an angry father forgive his son. After he helped the family, John got caught in heavy rain on the way home. He got very sick and died. Many people were sad to hear about John's death. The Tinsmith preacher had finished his work and went to be with his Lord, but God allowed John Bunyan to leave behind some important things. His example as an obedient follower of Jesus Christ and his writings. The Pilgrim's Progress is read by millions of people throughout the world today. All Christians need courage from Jesus Christ to complete their journeys through life. Like John Bunyan's story, in many nations today, Christians are placed in prison for preaching the gospel. We should pray for them and try to help them. Jesus promises to always be with us as we tell others about him. The end. Hope you enjoyed this true story. Stick around for the next one. Bye-bye now.